Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We're working on the 34 Ford project and we are getting this close to driving it. It's getting there. Uh, one of the next things we need to do is work on the cooling system. A lot of people have been asking us about that. You may remember early on in the project, I found some water in the bottom of the block when I took those old like plugs out of the block. And we were a little worried. Uh, I really do think that the engine's gonna be okay. Um, so I haven't really done much with it. But now that we have the full fuel system back together, we could put the radiator over top of the fuel lines where they run. Um, unfortunately, we have to take the hood and the grill off the car to do that. So we're gonna work on today is flushing out the block, flushing out the radiator, getting the hood and the grill off, getting that all mounted, and uh, hopefully getting the cooling system all hooked up today so that uh, we are one step closer to actually driving it. So let's get started. Um, so it'll fold into center, so what I do is grab the handles and just come up. Come up and then we'll look straight up and let it fold. Let it fold. Sorry, I got it. All right. I got it. Yep. So it folds like that and then it's easier to handle. Ah, uh, okay. I don't know if Larry had this off or he just almost took it apart and then ran out of energy. Because there's only two bolts holding this grill on. Or maybe there's more. Actually, no, I lied. There's two, there's a flathead there. Two flatheads in this, this one bolt or two. Well, honestly, that doesn't feel like there's even a bolt on this side. I think oh, no, know. look. Oh, wow. It's literally just sitting in there. They, uh, they okay. welded the studs, and he took the nuts off. Oh, so we can just pull it right out. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Or not. Yep. Very expensive grill to be. It's a beauty. That is insane. Yeah. Funny, this engine was painted gold at some time. Was it really? Yeah, you can see it's all gold on the top here. And oh yeah, you can see it right here coming off. And the underside of the hood is gold huh. on the car. Like if you flip that hood we took off, it's gold. And actually you can see gold like in the engine bay and stuff. So I don't know if like at some point the engine bay was painted gold. And I think the under the fenders were painted gold and, the, and Larry that had the car before me, he painted them black. Hmm. So, but I, I asked the so guy- maybe that, it was some sort of like show car thing then. Well, I asked the guy that built the car and he told me he didn't remember the engine being gold, but it had to be because he put the engine in. So it's kind of weird. I don't, maybe, you know, time time fades memories some. So. Oh yeah. But uh, he was- Or a, maybe somebody pulled it, painted it, put it back in. No, nah, because he sold the thing at a, used car lot running and driving. Larry bought the car and all he did was drive it and then take it apart. Oh, okay, so he So did. I talked to the guy that built the car, sold it, and then Larry bought it. So it never, in between there, it never was taken apart or modified. It was, he literally sold it to a used car lot to you know, either trade in or, or for a more practical or get money. So, all right, so we got the belt on, we got the pulley, water pump pulley, and the um, fan on. We. Uh, Threw some oil down into the water pump for the shaft to loop that up. Um, and everything's pretty good, belt's nice and tight. So what I'm gonna do is take this, this upper thermostat housing off, take the thermostat out, or actually put a hose through the engine um, and try and flush out any junk that might be in there, uh, out of the block, out of the top. Um, then we're also gonna try running the engine to let some of that stuff circulate through with the pump. And uh, we'll see what happens, but that's probably the best way to get it cleared out right now. I'm sure there's tons of opinions on the best way to do this, but this is the way we're gonna do it. Come on. And it's either gonna work or it's not gonna work. Ooh, it's rusty. Wow, all right. Here's a good reason we took that off. <laughs> This thing had no, had the upper hose just loose. And I'm glad I took that off because look at that mess. Not good. So I'm gonna carefully blow all this off, then take it out, then we can start flushing the engine out. All right, so we confirm that Matt is a small block Chevy noob. And uh, I didn't realize that this old 
this like converted oil filter bracket actually covered the thermostat. So forget what we were saying about having the generator all hooked up and ready to go. <laughs> so now we have to take it off to get the thermostat out. All right, so I think we can scoop this. I'm gonna hand this to you. Yeah. Got it. Got it. All right. So there, you just set it on the ground. Wow. Holy crap. Oh, Kinda like sludge and rust in the bottom of that. I'll show you guys the thermostat. Yeah. Got some residue of some old coolant on there, I guess. That bluish green stuff. So I th we could actually test this and see if the thermostat's good still. I may do it just for shits and giggles, but uh, inside, I'll have to get a light here. I'll take you guys off the tripod here. Inside, this is why I'm really glad I did, just did this. We could see, I'll get further away, zoom in. Oh, come on. There's like, yeah, there we go. Look at all that rust. It's hard to zoom in on, but that's like all rust residue in the bottom there. So we have to try and get a magnet, get some of that out, and then also flush some of it out. Just all was sitting there in the base like that, which is not good. So good thing we're doing a flush here. All right, so we're gonna see if we can get some rust out of here with my little handy dandy magnet. It's gonna probably be if you have a paper towel. Oh, grab that rag behind you. It's probably gonna take more than one. <laughs> Look at all that. Yeah, it's a good thing I went with my instincts and pulled the thermostat out. All right. Holy crap. Actually working pretty good. It's like that fishing game when you were a kid. Yeah, it is. It's, it's impossible to lose. It's like Operation, but without getting buzzed. <laughs> I just hated that. Look at this, man. It's like. Wow. Problem is, I can't. I gotta like keep folding the rag over. At least this gives us a fighting chance to get the thing cleaned out of junk. That's crazy. It's working well though. Yeah. Most of my ideas are really very, very poor, but this one is one of the few. We'll mark this down. Is that definitely circulated. Oh, that would have just blocked the radiator. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. It would have circulated. And, yeah. I mean, I... Maybe what we'll do is get a cup and see how much it's in the bottom. It's getting to be less. Give me one sec. Let me just... I'll get the rag.
Alright, so we're going to try and get some water going through this thing. See how wet I get today. You should start seeing, like here in the front, I'm going to open it up all the way. I saw some brown stuff come out. It's coming out the block on that side. It's coming out the block on that side. So we didn't put the forks in yet. Coming out those... It's not coming out the hoses yet. It's actually so, running pretty clear. So if the screen goes black, does that mean it stopped? No, no, it's just, it turns the screen up, but it's still recording. Oh. Sorry, Mike. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, it looks good. I mean, everything that's coming out is clear. So I think I might put the... See anything? Yeah, on this side it's all clear. All right. All right. So we already rattled some. Oops, got a little acorn, huh? Not good. Let's see if we can get the water to blow some of it out. Let's see if it comes out. Surprisingly. Oh, Oops. there we go. <laughs> Evacuate the. That's it. Let me tilt it a little bit. Wow, we got most of the acorns out already, I guess. Hmm, not bad. Fairly clear. I am very surprised. It's probably gonna shoot up at me, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Out the bottom. Luckily, I don't think the mousies made too much of a nest in this. It's probably good. Yeah. All right, so we went to the uh, local auto parts store, and uh, luckily they had thermostat in stock. I got a 
low temperature thermostat for this because it won't really be driving in the winter all that much. And uh, we drop that in and then we can put our little gasket on, put our what used to be the oil filter bracket that sits on top there and then we can throw the water neck back on. This bracket is not I think you gotta have this thing tightened down for it to sit. To sit, and then we had all that weight of the freaking generator on it. Yeah. And it's one of the things when they made this bracket, they probably made it all with it like folded down at the water neck. So everything fits. You have to put it together in the correct order. God, that's a tight fit. This is gonna be fun. Let me see. Oh, you can see? Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, if you want to hand me the other bolt and spring, you have the washers? Yeah, it's in my hand. Okay, that's no, right. Them on the bottom? Yeah. Did you get yours through? Yeah, mine's oh, cool. in. Put the washer and nut on. Hang on. I was almost just wondering if they're going to be long enough. Yeah, it's true. They say the part thing says that they're like X year to X. Oh, yeah, they work. Oh, yeah. Just barely. No, that's exactly, actually, that's exactly what we want. Just seat it in there. Okay. We'll have to check the grill, so don't go, just get yeah, them I'm, snug. I'm just getting them like to where it's like Good. not gonna like pop off. Yep. All right, so take two. Uh, we realized we, we got ahead of ourselves and uh, we had to put these little splash shields or whatever you want to call them in and uh, these have to go in before the radiator so after messing around flipping them in different configurations I think we figured it out here so we're gonna drop the radiator back in put the spring bolts in and I can tell you why guys like doing open cars or uh, no fenders How did I do this? Yeah, down, twist. All right, Jesus. All right. Now you gotta line like seven things up. So uh, Chris and I got the grill and everything back on and moving pretty good here. And next little piece of getting the cooling system hooked up is putting a vintage heater in the car. So uh, I wanted to make this thing very drivable and uh, put some features that maybe some of my other cars don't have in it. And even though it's super hot today and we shouldn't be thinking about heat in the car, you can hear my fan in the background and the shop fan going, um, we are putting a heater in this, but it already has the, Heater hoses already run for a heater that were in the car under the dash on the passenger side. Uh, that did not come with the car. The family wasn't able to find it, uh, the Schroll family. So 
Um, Jim K from Jersey uh, stops by every now and then, and he's been giving me some advice on the uh, on the Chevy engine in this as I've been going. Uh, he brought over some spare vintage fans um, or heaters with blower motors uh, that he had that he had tested, and I purchased a couple of them off of him. This is one of them. I think this uh, nice Art Deco design kind of matches the era of the car, and that's what we're going to be putting in. So it has two real big uh, ports coming out of the back that actually go through the firewall and the hose will slide on. Um, Jim tested the motor to make sure that it's good, and I have a little uh, drop-down resistor to hook up to this. Uh, Jim actually put some new wiring on the motor and everything for me. Um, so I'm going to put a little resistor on the back when we get it all hooked up. But right now I'm just trying to get coolant to run through this and not leak so we can start the engine up and pressurize everything and, and make sure that we don't have any uh, leaks or any issues with the cooling system. So I'm going to work on getting this hung under the firewall and getting the last of the hoses hooked up, the petcocks in, and just about ready to fill this thing up with coolant and start it up. Brackets. Cool. All right. Alright, so laying under the car here, putting these uh, drain plugs in, petcocks, and what we're finding is I'm digging out all kinds of crud that was living in the bottom of this engine here in this clean out plug or drain plug. And just like sludge that's been under there. So just using this little hook here to try and get as much of it out as I can. So even though we've kind of hosed everything out, we had to kind of break it loose here. So this is a little, a little scary. But what can you do? Fingers crossed. So we're gonna keep digging this crud out and then we will probably, we'll have to run the thing and then probably drain it again a couple times. This cooling system's gonna definitely be a, an adventure. But this could just be sludge and dirt that was in it from years of use, probably never been cleaned out. So.
All right, so got all the hoses hooked up. We got the upper one there. It's hard to see. I got a bottom one down there connected um, that I cut up from a hose. I just got it like AutoZone or Advanced or one of them. Got the heater hoses all hooked up. The heater's all hanging underneath here. As you guys can see, it's a little dark, I know. And uh, yeah, so I think we're pretty good. I'm gonna fill it up with some coolant and some water. I got some, some of the concentrated stuff, so we'll pour that in and pour some water in. And uh, we'll start it up and see if anything leaks and see if we can get it up to temperature and all that good stuff. So now we get to fill this monster radiator with a ton of coolant and water. I got this old can I got in an old that old camping trailer we 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 uh, were tinkering with for a little while. Uh, this is just a water like a camping water container, and I kept it around because it's actually really good. It's, I think it's like three or four gallons of water. So when you're filling up a big radiator or cooling system like this, it makes it a lot nicer. You don't have to go and fill it a bunch of times. Um, we were actually filled the radiator just the other just the other night for the 52, so had some some in there left over. Oops. All right, so after two afternoon evenings of uh, tinkering with this thing, uh, I basically am throwing my uh, throwing the towel in for now. Uh, what ended up happening was I thought the uh, small block intake had a seat to actually put the uh, like a store water style gauge in, and the bulb, the mechanical uh, gauge bulb or sender, actually seats in there. As soon as I filled it up to that level, it started pissing coolant out the top of there. And then I realized it doesn't have a seat, it's just straight through. And all of these adapters I have with all these random intakes and speed equipment and gauges and all this stuff, you would think I would have the right bushing to fit that. And I do not, but I have a lot of other ones I turned up, but they don't fit. Unfortunately, this is like a in-between size that flatheads don't use and I just don't have one around. So that's not gonna work. We also have to, uh, Tighten up some more hoses and stuff. They're, they're seeping a little bit where I didn't get the hose on all the way or the clamp quite tight. Uh, we're also gonna leave this thing full of coolant and make sure that the radiator doesn't like spring a leak or anything like that. Um, but we're pretty much ready to go. Uh, I'm glad I dug out all the, all the mud and gunk out of the bottom, which was really good. So I think, fingers crossed, we should be able to get this thing to start and run with the cooling system like really soon after I order just the bushing and stuff like that. So that's really good. So. Uh, thank you guys, appreciate it. Uh, if you guys are interested, this Sunday, after you're watching this video, we're gonna be doing a live. We had a ton of questions and, and requests to do another uh, Sunday service live session in the shop. So this Sunday, we're gonna be doing a live. Uh, we're gonna start it at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys are interested, log in. We'll, we'll be on the chat talking to you guys, showing you whatever you wanna show. Um, and kind of giving you guys a tour of what's going on in the shop right now. It's kind of a mess and a lot of craziness going on, but it'll be fun. We can do a bunch of Q&A again, so make sure you guys log in and uh, join us in the chat. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.